other three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. It's the After Show where we gather. Well, we're here again. What are you going to do? Nobody can stop us because nobody's the boss of us, so there. <laughs> here we have Michelle. We have Jim. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey, bud. Ah. Oh, bud, excuse me. Well, I'd ask him how he's doing, like our callers do. That's right, that's right. How you doing? Well, I'm the same as I was a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing's that's changed, okay. Beth. Yeah, you can't help it. All they're doing is trying to say hello. It's I know. Politeness. It's human nature. It's, it's human polite. nature. It's fine. It's what it is. Sandy is doing fine in Baton Rouge, I think. So we're going to check in with her. Hey, Sandy. Hi, good afternoon. So well, first question is, did you get hit by any of the flooding? Um, in 2016, yes, my home did receive three feet of water, but a recent, about a week ago, it was mainly street flooding, so I was not affected. Right, because we were watching the uh, the news and the, that car floating you know, away, and the people are trying to get the people out of the car. Of course, I'm thinking, okay, everybody knows this place floods every time, so why are we people keep driving through this place? Exactly. Uh, I was talking with a friend, and we thought, why, since... Since they know this, why does why um, you know doesn't the city just roadblock it when we know that we're going to have these heavy rains? Exactly. Because people still go in it. <laughs> yeah, they will, and you know, and and you can have somebody that's not from around there that doesn't know it floods, and you can't tell it's a, this thing drops down like. It's, I mean, it drops down like 12 feet, so it's deep. It's It looks like it's a foot deep, but it's nine feet deep when you go hit it, and your your car's going under. Right. So, right. And, Tom, do you know if the uh, city owns the towing company? Maybe that's why they don't put the sides on. <laughs> well, nice. Yeah, yeah. Possibility. And, and in this case, this this car is floating. There's, a, a, I think it's a woman inside, two firefighters jump in the water. They're beating on the windows, trying to break open the windows as it's moving around, and the thing is getting lower and lower in the water. It's going down. Oh, no. And they finally are able to get her out, so it's one of those deals. Okay, you might want to put barricades up. I, I'm with Sandy on this one. Yep. Exactly. Yep. We actually had one death. Um, uh, yep. Same thing. He was going under one of the interstates, and it's always high water there. And unfortunately, he got trapped in the in the car in the yep. water, and he he drowned. Oh no! Oh. oh yeah, it's just one of those deals. You know, you mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta believe that that stuff will happen to you. It will it will hurt you. You know. And yes, it's going to be inconvenient. I don't want to turn around. It, it doesn't matter. Turn around. Just just do it. Mm-hmm. I, but Sandy, that's not why you called. What, what do you got there? <laughs> well, I wanted to get your thoughts on the, what you were talking earlier about all the different um, brands and mm-hmm. uh, most popular um, 9mm pistols. And I purchased a Walther, um, I think it's a PPS M2, about two years ago. Mm-hmm. And prior to that, which I still do have a 38, I never liked the 38, and I just couldn't hit anything with it. It had a bad recall, it was bulky. So I still have it, but. I bought the Walther, and I, you know, I'm, I'm having those second thoughts. Of, you know, maybe I should have gotten uh, one of the, like a Smith or a Sig, um, for the price I paid for it. Uh, I do like shooting it. I can actually hit the target. But one thing that kind of bugs me is they had a recall on it about a year ago. Mm-hmm. I sent it in and got that repaired. And I'm just, you know, having those thoughts. Maybe I should have gotten a different type. All right. Um, and you didn't first of all, all the companies have recalls of some form. You know, okay, they yeah, make a okay. lot of stuff. Well, so I'm not worried about recalls. That doesn't bother me. You got it repaired. You got it, whatever the fix was. Mm-hmm. You you said you like shooting it and you shoot it well. One thing I will say about the Walther semi-auto and nine millimeters, they are so nice ergonomically. They feel so good in the hand. And I think they really work super well for smaller hands. So how does it? feel to you when you shoot it? It feels good, and I actually did a lot of, you know, I read a lot of reviews, and it went into the gun shops and, and you know, held them, and this one felt really good, and, um, I, but again, I just, I'm having those second thoughts, and because everybody's saying, oh, I've never heard of a author, or you should have got a Glock, or you should have got a Glock, or you should have got a good stuff. Yeah. Okay, let me back up. Walther has been a major gun maker for probably a century. Uh, they are a big German gun maker, and they made all sorts of great, I mean, we're talking about really great designs and great guns. And if somebody says they've never heard of it, all that means is they've never heard of it. That's, that's all it says. 
they make good stuff. I mean, Michelle, dive in here. Yeah, I, this is what I have to say. Bond, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Walter PPK, that was the James yeah. Bond pistol. No, yeah. I would not say to be afraid of that firearm whatsoever. It is in a very economical price, and they make a very well-placed pistol as far as price range goes, mm -hmm. but it's very ergonomical. So, it, you know, depending on your model, Sandy, I don't know the specific model that you have, but, you know, they went after a market and they made it so the grip felt fantastic when you put it in your hand. It's like, oh, yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> so I would not be afraid of that gun. And you're right, Tom. All these companies have recalls. I mean, SIG had a recall on their 365. Yeah. Smith had recalls on their shields. Ruger's had recalls. Exactly. Glock. Everybody, I mean, they all do. Every Everybody has had recalls, but they stand behind them. You send it in, you yep. get it taken care of, you don't worry about it. Just, you know. And most of these are, have lifetime warranties on the guns. I mean, these these big name gun brands, they, they do have the warranties. And Walther falls into that line, even though, um, you know, you may not know the name. All right, I got a question for you, Sandy. Are you just thinking maybe you'd like to have another gun? No, I think I'm good. I, you know, I, have, I still have the 38, and, and I will tell you that when I was shopping, uh, when I went to these, um, I went to a concealed carry class, and I went to these um, gun shops looking for a gun, and just about every single man <laughs> that was in there said, oh, you need a 38. Mm. I, I mean, you need a revolver. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it's just, it's just a good uh, gun for a woman to have. And I thought, okay, do you think I'm too dumb to figure out how to work a 9 mil man? I am stomping my feet and laughing. That's I'm, hilarious. I'm going to step away from the mic, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's true. <laughs> because because of course you're a woman, you couldn't possibly know how to operate a piece of machinery. No, right. Oh my gosh. There, oh All right. my god. All you right, would you I, I, I need Sandy, I need you to send Michelle a list of the names of the people who told you that. <laughs> She's going to hunt them I down. Have their names. <laughs> I mean, oh, you know, and I'm sorry. It's it. It's not that it. They don't mean happening. to be that way, right? Yeah. I know. Some do. No, no, no. Actually, some. And I'm just gonna say it. Some do. Some are mean. Some really do think that women can't handle the stone simplicity of a semi-automatic pistol. Uh, some of them are just condescending and rude and mean and I'm sorry and that's just that way but most of them you're right most of them that's what they were told they just keep repeating the same things over and over right. again they're not instructors they're not shooters they're just clerks and they don't know mm -hmm. and this now I just want to say this for everybody who works at a gun store stop doing that it's the wrong advice a 38 revolver is a wonderful uh, tool, but it's a difficult tool to master. And it's not something you give most women or most first-time shooters or beginning shooters. It's for somebody who really knows what he or she is doing. A 9 millimeter pistol is the way to go every time. Michelle? No, and I would agree with you. I, 380 is not the first firearm I would put into your no. hand if you were new to our world of semi-automatics especially. But uh, for sure, the 9 millimeters. And I'll tell you, Sandy, from my experience, there's a couple of them that stand out, you know, in my mind. And they are the um, the 365 is, is great to shoot. It can be a little heavy. It might be too heavy mm -hmm. for you to carry. But the Glocks, the, um, you know, 42 and 43, depending if you want to shoot a 380 or a 9, are are great feeling guns, but you know, the Smith and Wesson shield, they make the, you know, original shield that you can get for, Oh my goodness. 250 it, it, bucks, 270 bucks. It's, it's disgusting. Crazy. It's under $300. Yeah. yeah. So it's disgusting. You're it, funny. Is. It, it is. It's, it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But, you know, but, but Sandy, go out there and try them. You know what, Sandy, if, if you don't like that revolver that you own, <laughs> it's time to seriously, why have it? If you don't like it, you're not going to shoot it. Sell right. it. Trade it. Go get you a different. So that way you ended up. Oh, oh, you know what you could do? This is not a bad idea. I just thought of this. Uh, 
go get you the 22 rimfire version of the Walther. Now you could you could shoot that just for fun and shoot like crazy mm-hmm. and then have your nine millimeter. I don't know. I'm just yeah. tossing out. I'm trying to spend your money is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I think that. I, mean, I really am happy with the gun. I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because it, that was the one that I heard you mention. And, you know, the reason I got it is, that, like I said, I have the revolver, but it's bulky and heavy. And mm-hmm. I, and then I wanted to at some point conceal carry. This, is, is, to me, was a perfect size gun. Right. Well, in in. I wouldn't say to to just trade in something if it's not been unreliable and you shoot it very well and you can carry it and, and conceal it the way that you want to, by means, don't get rid of it, <laughs> you know, no. uh, keep it. Even if you find another item, I, I still mm-hmm. wouldn't get rid of it. Yeah, add on to it, but don't get rid of that because it's, it's doing yeah, what it's I supposed think, to do and you like yeah. it. Yeah, and, you know, I've taken it to the range several times and shot it, and um, one of the guys that was helping me, you know, the first few times, I was disappointed that I wasn't hitting the bullseye, but I was like, I need to And I'm like, no, I'm not doing good because I didn't. He says, ma'am, he's dead. He's dead. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> But thank y'all so much. I just wanted to ask that question. You're welcome. All righty. Well, you have a good pistol, so don't let anybody talk you out of it. You did well. Thank you, Sandy. Appreciate that. Oh. That's so frustrating. Yeah. I mean, I get where they're going. A thirty-eight is an all-around easy firearm. Most people can can shoot it. There's lots of ammo choices. They make them lightweight. They make them heavy. But if that's not what somebody wants, just let them get what they want. Well, and the other thing is, it is easy to operate. It is not easy to operate well. It's easy to load. You could pull the trigger. It'll go bang. But a 38 revolver, if you're shooting a double action, is not an easy gun to hit stuff with. Right. Right. I agree. You know? So, yeah, I can show you how to put ammo in it and close the cylinder and pull the trigger and it'll go bang. But that doesn't mean you're going to be able to hit anything. And it certainly, for most people, is not going to be a pleasant experience. I mean, is there anybody who really likes shooting snub-nosed revolvers a lot? Uh, only guys. Only if you're a man. That's right, because, you know, you're... <laughs> yeah, sure. Testosterone poisoning. Why do we always say have a woman train a woman? And you know the it's, first thing I would have thrown out there, Tom. What, what's that? If if she was seriously considering, even considering a revolver. Oh, gee, I can't imagine. <laughs> okay, mm. then I don't have to say it. No, no, nothing comes Three, to mind. Three, two, seven. Yep, and an LCR. Yeah. Oh, my an goodness. LCR. Magnum. Yeah. Yep. No, yep, no. yep, yep, yep. It's like, you know, and it's so interesting how you tell people that and you tell them over and over and over and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they shoot one and they go, wow, hey, you know, this is really pretty nice. I'm going, yeah, I wish I'd thought of that. Yeah. I'd have told you about it. Oh, my goodness. You you find that, wow, uh, <laughs> funny why I would have even yeah. mentioned that gun to yeah. try. Why have, we, why have we said that a hundred times already? <laughs> but, oh, my God. Yeah, it's but it is. 27. Yeah, I wonder if you'll still be glowing after this commercial break. Oh. I don't know. That's his way of telling us. Whatever, Jim. Up. Stop talking. <laughs> All right, be right back. Taking the striker fired category by storm, the CZP 10 delivers what most in the genre cannot. From the superb trigger to the purpose driven features to the engineered ergonomics, the CZP 10 is the complete package right out of the box. With 12 plus 1 capacity in the P10S, 15 plus 1 in the PC10, and 19 plus 1 in the P10F, there's a P10 for every purpose. For more information, please visit cz-usa.com. Introducing the all-new St. Victor from Springfield Armory. Our versatile line of battle-ready configurations designed for serious shooters and built on the rock-solid St. platform for unwavering reliability. Available in carbine length rifle, SBR, and pistol configurations, each St. Victor is purpose built and loaded with features to deliver ultimate performance under extreme conditions. The all new St. Victor from Springfield Armory. Never a victim, always the victor. Okay, back at you here. Uh, gun store stories. Ooh. Michelle, how do you find good people who don't do the whole here you go little lady you need a revolver 
Uh, how, how do you, I mean, because you got good people who work there. How do you find good people? Do you train them or do you, I, yeah. do you find them that are already good? Well, I mean, you want them to come in already having basic knowledge or even if it's in-depth knowledge. I mean, that's what all of us really want, right? So it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be so much training. But, you know, I think the biggest thing is ask a question, shut up and listen. That's the mm. big thing. What are you looking for? Be quiet. And then, uh, of course, it, and it takes a little bit of work, too, because these women don't typically come into the stores alone. They come in with somebody. Now, if they uh, come in with other women, that's mm-hmm. fine. But if, for instance, their spouse or boyfriend or whoever the significant other comes <laughs> in. Yeah, now we got the whole. Uh, this is what she needs. I know well, what's best for her. Yeah, I don't She's know my girl. that it is. Yeah. yeah. But I I will say a game changer is having a, you know, a pistol range that's open to the public, Mm. but having the most popular pistols that are out there that are considered the concealed carry, because that's what most people right now are looking for, having them available Try it. You try it and see. Let me go out there with you and you physically pull the trigger and you see if you like it. Because I I say to people all the time, well, he may like the Glock, but that might not be the right one for you. It might not be the right amount of recoil or right feel for the hand or whatever it is. You know, and and that's when you say, you know, I know that your sweetie over here, old numb nuts, uh, is trying to get you to buy this thing. (laughs) I have uh, never said that. (laughs) Yes, you big dummy, you. And it's it's like, you know, you, man, walk over there. Go away. Here, here, look, here's $20. Go find something to buy. (laughs) Just get Go away. You're messing up the works here. You're not, as I say, you're not helping. Right. It, It really has to be one of the, it is such a personal thing. And, and, you know, we were sitting last night discussing again, like how hard it is to conceal carry. We, we are just now, although we're wet, we're not as wet as some of the other states across the country here. We're just now warm. <laughs> wow. I mean, we're just now into the sixties and seventies for mm-hmm. the last week. Okay, where it, so it, you're just, you're having to switch over to summer carry mode. It, yep. And so it's like, oh, all over again. Here we go. It's just not comfortable. You know, and for guys, it's not bad. It's a little bit more difficult for women. Although I will say this, the tuckable holsters, um, I have the, was it, Victory Comp that I, I got, I actually bought it right off of the uh, SIG website for the 365. Had it for a while before I figured out it was tuckable. And it's like, oh. This is really nice. I mean, I can tuck in my shirt. But is there any reason that women, if they're wearing pants, couldn't do a tuckable sh- shirt, you know, a tuckable holster? No, I, I don't think most women dress that way. Mm. You know, I mean, we're probably looking at tank tops and, you know, shorts. And yeah. and, 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 and we're looking at those, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just had to do it. it the yeah, sundresses so. <laughs> where you don't have pockets, you know, those types of things. Yeah. Where And, and if, you, if you've got those thin sundresses that people can see, they go, oh, look, she's carrying a what's what's under her She's, she's so, packing, yeah. Okay. That's right. You're going, no, okay. So, yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> so, all right. So what do you do, Michelle, for you personally when you're carrying in the summer? Uh, belly band. A belly band or, you know, they have compression shirts that have the uh, the, the side pockets on them for, mm-hmm. for concealment, and, and those work great, too. So then you have to probably downsize your pistol? Some do, yeah. It just, I, you know what? It depends on your torso. That That is what's so uh-huh. hard. If you're shorter uh, torso, mm-hmm. you know, the... Sure. Uh, you know, dependent, it, it doesn't matter. It There's is no such a blanket answer. It, right? It is so you know, difficult. I mean, seriously. I mean, if you, if you're five feet tall, mm-hmm. you know, you just don't have much torso to work with. If you go from your belt line to your basically armpit line, if you will. Uh, there's not much to work with there. And you may have to go to a smaller, a considerably smaller pistol. Right. And it might not be the way that you initially thought you would end up carrying. So I would say be open to mm. having to spend some money on some different holsters and honestly trying them out, but sticking with them for a couple of days before you're like, no, this one's no good. Yeah, well, try it for a while. And then if, once you commit to it, then you really need to work on the presentation. How am I going to draw this? I mean, what's yep. it going to require? Well, what it may require is yanking up your shirt mm-hmm. 
and you know jump i mean forget how it looks and everything else who cares at that point uh, but you got to practice that. Well, and it's, you know, just like Sandy was having a hard time going into a store and finding somebody that didn't want to put her on the atypical revolver. Mm-hmm. This is a very difficult process for women, too, because unfortunately, while there's a lot of women in stores across the country, there's not enough of them. And to carry for women right now is very difficult with the the shorts and I'm sorry, the length of the shorts are very short. Yeah. You know, they're very low waisted. And so there's not actually much room to be able to tuck a holster no. into. There's not a lot of real estate there. Right. And they and if you move and bend and you've got children or whatever, the next thing you know, your pistol's flopping forward. You don't have a gun belt. You know, I, it's a thing. And you may have to do what men have been doing for a long time which is you may have to simply change the way you dress if you're if you want to wear a form-fitting tank top but you also want to be able to carry the two may not be possible to do together this is what i have to say that stuff is so overrated (laughs) (laughs) what is the the form-fitted clothing Like, move on. Let's get past this for what we want to do for the security yeah. and safety yeah. of our lives. No, you're right. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, you know, I was always a tuck it in, look sharp kind of a guy. And man, I, about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, I went to the shirt tail out. You're not, Miami Biced. I I did. And I get Hawaiian type shirts, which yep. are made to be worn out. Yep. And, you know, and then but at the same time, I always have a couple of tuckable holsters. If I need to wear a dress shirt that's tucked in, mm-hmm. I can do that and still carry a full size pistol right. with an inside the waistband holster that's tuckable. It works just fine. And you would be amazed at what you can actually conceal, but it can be it can be difficult. And say if if there's a woman in the store try to talk to them. And most men are going to be very uncomfortable in making suggestions and, and helping you try holsters. So there's point. the there's the plus side of that because anybody that comes into the store is like, let me go get my wife. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> She's got far more experience in That's this right. than I do. Yeah, you know, there are just some things we don't want to guys shouldn't be getting into real detail with a, a woman right. customer about. Right? Well and it's unfortunate that I would say women, while we can use any of the holsters that are out there, really aren't designed for us. They're too big. Mm. A lot of them are too big. Mm. So, you know, some some companies actually have a HERS model where they're a little bit slimmer. Mm. So Mm -hmm. those types of things are out there. But stick with it. It's difficult. Yeah. And if you do some looking around, there are some... I almost want to use the word boutique holster makers, little bitty outfits that make, mm-hmm. like Hydex holsters make them real thin, more form fitting. There's, there's a, a little guy and called, the website is aholster.com. I mean, it sounds weird, but that's just it. Aholster.com. But he makes these cool holsters that are, actually, he works with uh, Tiger McKee. Mm. And Tiger uh, helps design the holsters. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And uh, I just, in fact, I, I've got like two or three of his. I just ordered another one last week. Yeah. Um, you know, it just, they're thin, I guess, is the thing I like about them. They're not, not bulky. And the other thing you have to take into consideration, too, is sweat value. Oh, right? it's priceless. It's I priceless. Got a lot of that. Oh, <laughs> you know, if you're if you're doing leather and you're carrying and you're oh, carrying yeah. a blued gun or, you yeah. know, I mean, it, it it's going to take a toll on, yep, on your pistols is. and, 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 and your really, holster. I love, hold, I love leather, but honestly, Kydex, particularly in the summer mm-hmm. when you're sweating, yep. is a way to go. Yep. Phew. Uh, holster 101. All right. Hey, all right, you guys, let's take a quick break here. We'll come back and uh, beat on this one more time. Be right back. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. You want to reach for history, for greatness. So reach for the FN 5.7, a 5.7 millimeter pistol built with the DNA of over a century of legendary FN firearms. And now, it's within reach at your local firearms dealer. The FN 5.7 is the perfect combination of accuracy and stopping power. FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. Hi, this is Ryan Gresham from Gun Talk. 
If you like guns, you need to enter our biggest giveaway ever at guntalk.com slash win. One person will win more than $11,000 in guns, gear, and accessories to stuff your safe or hit the range. The grand prize includes a night vision scope and rangefinder from ATN, a custom 1911 from Auto Ordnance, a crossbreed holsters concealed carry pack, an FN 509 tactical pistol, the ultimate gun safe organizer pack from Gun Storage Solutions, a custom Glock 22 from Lone Wolf Distributors, clothing, range bags, and more from Proper, Remington's 870DM and TAC-14 shotguns, plus two cases of buckshot, Stag Arms Stag 15 tactical rifle, Tandem Cross Rimfire customization kits, a Ruger Mark IV pistol, and much, much more. Go to guntalk.com slash win to enter. That's guntalk.com slash win. And we are back, back this time, telling stories during the break that we cannot share. Yeah, there are some things we can't even say on the after yeah. show. And you think, oh, that's all, yeah, anything on the after show. Well, actually, no. No. No, no. <laughs> well, we could once. This is true. And then, We'd I, be done. whatever happened to Jim? I don't know. I don't <laughs> hear from him anymore. Yeah. He's working at Michelle's store trying to talk women into buying only 38 revolvers now. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh glad we my. had Steve on the show today. It's always fun. And Steve yeah. gets so wrapped up in this stuff. He, It's like if you ask him about a gun, he starts off, well, first they invented steel. Well, you know? <laughs> I, I was truly wondering if he even cracked the book. Like, are you really looking it up, or do you just know these things? No, he had to look up the 2213. Yeah. Yeah, the 2213 threw him, but, you know, but other than that, I think he actually knows this. That's crazy. We, we did have, okay, we had one call that we didn't put on, and the guy wanted to know about the Mark one three fourteen or something. 34 chain gun, yeah. 30, yeah. Chain, chain gun. Yeah. And I looked it up, and uh, like two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars for a chain gun. Um, some calls don't make it onto the air. I mean, that was cool. He didn't have one. He wasn't looking for the value. He's actually he's thinking about buying one or something. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. uh, Google that one, dude. It's that's you know, that's one of those that if you have to ask how much it costs, you can't afford it. <laughs> Not to mention what it would cost to feed it. What are those, like 3,000 rounds a minute? I thought for sure you were going to ask Steve what the value would be on a punkle. <laughs> ah, that would have been great. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> uh, flash back to last week. Oh, my gosh. Know, it's still so cool, yeah. That is, you know, going, okay. uh, it turns out it is a matchlock. Yeah, 201 yeah. years old, right? It's, yeah, it's insane. machine gun. Yeah. Flint yeah. lock machine gun. Like just right after the 17, the turn of the century, 17, 1700s, 18, so yeah, like 17, yeah. or something. Their first machine gun. Okay, that's cool. Uh, well, he was a lawyer, too. That's the cool part. He wasn't a machinist <laughs> particularly. He was Uncle a lawyer. Was. Yeah. Well, he had to do something because people kept making fun of his name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. And I can take out 90 of you per minute. Well, That's and right. it's, it, it's funny because, of course, you know, anything that went onto the ship, there's records of these types of things, right? So it's right. like, although there's registry of the Poco gun being on board, it is not known whether or not it was used. <laughs> right. <laughs> so gay. <laughs> like, just, my goodness. Besides, it's just fun to say, Punkle gun. <laughs> yeah, I came across when it's not working. Hello, Brownells. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need some parts. You want it's what? Num- Numerich. <laughs> Come on. I need parts for this thing. Right. Yeah, right. Oh, man. Did you guys happen to see that uh, chart that Brownells put out this week on the uh, silencer of the noises? No, that, but how cool. I heard It was very cool. It. Yeah. Very well done. Um, it basically started like with jet engines at different l- decibel levels. And the uh, a suppressed firearm came in. I don't know which gun they were using, but it came in at about the level of a jackhammer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, but they're you know, silent, Tom. Oh, they're yeah, noise right. free. But they, but you'll love this. They also listed on the scale as it went down to different noises and gets lower and lower. Somewhere down there, they also listed the movie silencer noise. <laughs> <laughs> Which is ah, that's great. <laughs> so here's the question, right? I mean, because a comment was made, I don't know, this week or last week that President Trump had made that he doesn't particularly like right. all the silencer movements that are happening because you're unable to hear a firearm. I mean, I don't know what his 
thought processes with the whole thing. So I missed that bit and I haven't gone back to look it uh, up. Well, what, he said, I don't like them. Uh, you know, and of course, I think he's working from an absolute void of knowledge. And I mean, of course, he usually researches things so carefully before he ever makes a very you know careful statement about things. Yeah, well, he didn't really go into depth. He just said, yeah, I, no, I don't he, like he, them, no, but I'm going to look he, into he, it. He, he pops off regularly. I mean, mm -hmm. I like the guy, support those? the okay. guy, but holy moly, does he ever pop off a lot about things he doesn't know what he's talking well, about. That may be true, but what I heard him say about this was like, it was guarded. He, he watched what he said. Uh, I no, I no, he, no, no. He said, I don't like them and we ought to do something about them. Oh, okay. I heard yeah, him say so, he's going to look into it. But. Yeah, so, but I'm sure what happened was, you know, with any luck, his son, Don Jr., who knows all about silencers, probably had a little conversation with him about, Dad, let's talk about this. Yeah, this isn't changing crime by any means. Right, and, and <laughs> it's like the first thing you ever heard of anybody use one until now. Right. Um, the other thing I'm curious about is if it's better for us for to master the language and own the argument, if we avoid the term silencers again. Right. A lot of, pe a lot of people have said that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Call a suppressor, and, right? Mm -hmm. Call a suppressor. Noise reducer. Yeah, muffler. Mu yeah, muffler, it. yeah, even easier. Uh, um, but... Yes, it, you know, if you say suppressor, it's more accurate. And yes, Hiram Maxim called them silencers, the guy who invented them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we have to say that. Right. But at the same time, um, you know, it's just a case of education. So, okay, this is what the noise level. And, of course, ultimately you come back to the gun banners don't care. Right. right. It's just right. another claim they can make. And if they make it and say, you know, well, you don't care about children. You know, you're okay with children dying. It's like that's their trump card on everything. I said, well, then the conversation's over because, you know, you won't give up your toys, you know, and you're okay with children dying so you can play with your toys. Mm -hmm. And then you're going, okay, can we talk about decibel levels? Can we talk about, no, I'm sorry. They, they basically just took the argument away by claiming that they have the high ground. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult conversation to have because you need a little bit more time to explain it. And not only that, but it's not as, I mean, yes, can anybody possess them? Yes. If they go through the channels and they fill out their paperwork and get the tax stamp approval, Which what, six to criminal, nine criminals months. Criminals do that. Every criminal follows <laughs> right, that. Right. I mean, it, yes, they're, they're accessible, but it's not like they're just out there like candy. And do you think any, I mean, I was joking, obviously, but do you think any criminal is going to say, damn, you know, I was going to go take out a bunch of people, but they outlawed those darn suppressors. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it's frustrating. And then, of course, you got the governor of uh, Virginia. That's a, it's actually, when if you were to step back from it a little bit, it's you get a chuckle out of what he's up to because he, you had this terrible shooting, all right? Mm -hmm. Guy used two pistols, so they can't do assault weapons, right? He bought them over a two-year period, went through the background check, so you can't do the whole uh, one-gun-a-month deal. Mm -hmm. yeah, and let's see. He used a, possibly used a suppressor. We're not quite sure on that. Uh, but he's going to call the special session to ban assault weapons not used to require a, a, a quota. You can't buy more than one gun a month. Wouldn't have stopped this guy to have universal background checks. He went through. Uh, it doesn't apply. He already did the background check. A and you know, he went through one for his suppressor. If he, and he went through a suppressor. That's a third one. But what, and Steve alluded to it and it's, uh, no, was it, no, it was Alan did. And look. This is the governor who, who they have the pictures of him doing blackface. Mm -hmm. Well, within his, he's a Democrat, within his backers, Democrats, that's like the worst possible thing in the world. So what can he do to get himself out of that situation? Or oh, he can be the uber gun banner and they love that. Right. And so that's what's going on. So he here. can save mm -hmm. some face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's saving some face. Oh, I like that. Nice. <laughs> Regardless of the color of it. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> so there's, you know, there's all of these different things going on. I have my fingers crossed, but I think the legislature in Virginia is going to say, tell you what we'll do just to get you to shut up. <laughs> we will say, yeah, there should be additional penalties for using a gun in a crime. I think it's a bad idea yep. because it basically sets up the concept of guns are bad because you actually get additional penalties if you use those to commit a crime as opposed to, you know, if you stab somebody to death, that's not nearly as bad as shooting somebody to death. Right, because really? they're, less, they're less dead if you stab I'm, them I'm than if you shoot sure them. I'm not sure the victim cares, i got to tell you. <sighs> but, but I don't think Virginia's going to do anything with this. We'll see. But well, that's kind of like the term hate crime, too, to me. Thought crime. 
yeah. committing a crime while thinking bad thoughts. Yeah. Like, That's what a hate crime is. Yeah. You know. As opposed to all those pleasant thoughts you have while killing people. <laughs> yeah, all of that. So anyway, I got a rifle on the way. Yes. Oh, yeah. You didn't go into detail. No. Uh, well, it's a uh, it's old school. It is a blind magazine, no box magazine, not even a swing away floor plate. So to get, you know, you load it up, but then to get the ammo out of the rifle, you have to work the action, work the bolt to throw them out. That means, you know, no moving parts, basically no moving parts other than the spring in there. Uh, makes it lightweight. It's five pounds, 10 ounces, I think, uh, with a 24 inch barrel. Uh, but it's, uh, it's basically, it's a Mauser or an old style model 70 mm-hmm. action, just left-handed. Those are hard to find. You, you can kind of find, maybe you could hunt down an old Model 70, might be able to find a left-handed Mauser action somewhere. But these guys in Montana are making them. I've never had one. I've never shot one. I don't know. They have a pretty good reputation. This was just a leap of faith. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll go that way. And, you know, no, I'm not getting it for free. I'm buying it. Just I just wanted the rifle. So there it is. So on that if it's a Mauser style, is it going to be altered so obviously you can put scope and everything on it? I mean, is well, it sport- when I say when I say Mauser style, it's like the more modern Mauser style. Okay. The bolt, okay. the bolt is, right. uh, I believe it's external claw. Yeah, it's external claw extractor Mauser style. But no, it's not goofy old style Mauser with okay. the weird receiver and bridge. Right. So yeah, it's set up. You can use Model seventy uh, rings on it, bases and rings. Okay. Have you ever nice. looked at the uh, Vortex brand of scopes, Tom? I've not spent any time. I know that they have a real good reputation. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you think? Uh, they do very well with us at our at our store. Um, and I know just on the competition side, there's a lot of people out there using the Vortex. Of mm-hmm. course, Night Force, I mean, you know, that's that's a huge one, too. But Night Force is more expensive. Yeah. I thought so, yeah. They're, mm-hmm. they're supposed to be really good. And, I mean, right. it's like, I mean, and it, of course, SIG has a, a complete line now. Mm-hmm. They're trying to expand it. I think they've got, God, I always get confused, first versus second focal plane. Uh, the, the one that I like is not the one that's the tactical guys like and so most of theirs are the tactical style so we'll have to figure that one out right uh and then think companies like uh loophole mm-hmm. will have they now have everything from fairly entry-level scopes at the two to three hundred dollar range up to the twenty five hundred dollar range mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep well, there's, I mean, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it is. It, it's a lot of looking things up, a lot of, you know, what powers, what range, what are you, you know, exactly what are you shooting? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you want a three power, you want a five power. Like I said, you probably know. like a three, three. to nine mm-hmm. to, or three and a half to 10. I don't, I don't think I want anything more than that. And again, because of the long range craze, the tactical craze, you see a lot of three to 15s, that kind of range. Mm-hmm. Well, they're bigger, they're heavier, and I want yep. light. I, I'm going to carry it all day up and down those mountains. And there's nothing you can't shoot with a nine power scope. I don't right. care if right. it's out of 500 yards. So the little, uh, little pulled freedom would be just fine for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It, you know, yeah. that $400, $500 gun. Yes. And no, exactly. for no more than you're going to use it par- probably, it's still going to have good scope lens quality. And, right. Uh, now, yeah. see, he's budget minded. He'll buy two, three powers and put them in front of each other. <laughs> like so he's got like a nine binoculars. Now. He's got a nine now, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is that three times three? Okay. Three to nine. <laughs> I, like I want to switch back to three, just take the front one off. But but what happens if you put them both up at nine? How much do you Ooh, got? Oh, a so lot. Times nine. A lot. It's a bunch. <laughs> Now, did you, are you contemplating old school style scope? I mean, with some new technology versus digital stuff because it's an old style gun, or are you just not a digital scope guy? Not yet. I, I, the digital scopes, now by digital, we're talking about the ones that actually have a camera and a Yeah, screen. and they hook up to your iPhone and yeah, you can record no. stuff and all that. No. Uh, my experience is they have a lot of cool features, but. I don't think the optics are as good as right. just pure optics yet. Right. Okay. And, and does it does it kind of get away from the hunting experience by being well, that high tech or no? I don't know about that. The, the, my problem with them is just it's failure points. The more you add electronics to stuff and you're on the side of a mountain mm-hmm. and you're, you know, it's raining and it's cold and it's snowing and it's sleeting and you just dropped it and your rifle just bounced 20 feet down on the rocks. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking I don't want electronics in there. Right. Hmm. Just a thing. Okay. Just curi- curious. Uh, and uh, when you get up in the morning, everything's fogged up because everything got covered with uh, moisture. 
Mm-hmm. If you left it in the tent, it got moisture. If you left it out of the tent, it got rained on. It's like, gotcha. yeah. You know, and open style scopes don't care. They just work. Okay. Wipe off the lens and just go. So. Uh, and like you say, that's what they're designed for. Yes. But I just, he, I just know he's a tech geek, too. So well, I'm figuring. He can wear his GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well, actually, I'll just I'll take my selfie stick because it, it is, in fact, all about me. There you go. <laughs> Here's me drawing a bead on the on the deer. I'm not really pointing the gun at myself. It just looks like it from the selfie. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. We'll put a selfie stick on the end of the muzzle. No. There you go. Which is good, right up until the time you pull the trigger. Oh, my. Not so good. So what kind of rig you're on? A uh, 6.5 uh, iPhone? Six, yeah. <laughs> is that version 6.5? Well, I kind of, sort of. Yeah. Six and a half version. <laughs> now, 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 you're right, Michelle. You spent a lot of time kind of working on the what ifs, what do I want, or this. And now I'm going, 